Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of Teaching Tales. Once again, I am Brent Coley, your host, and I am super excited today to welcome one of the awesome teachers at my very own school, Lori Poliska, as our guest. Lori, thanks for joining me today. Sure, it's my pleasure. All right, so Lori, tell us about, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I started at Alta around 1988 in a community with only two schools wow. and grew with it. And every time we had an opportunity to split off to other schools, I never wanted to go. I wanted to stay here. It's my home, my heart. I love the neighbors, the families. Um, now are generational. Yeah. Uh, Alta's grown and changed. It hasn't been stagnant, and I love to grow with it. And uh, my own children brought my own children oh. here. Two uh, schools, you said? Brought my children. There were two to schools just... when you started at Alta? That's yes. right, there were two. And yes. now there are 11 elementary schools yes. in our district. Yeah. Wow. So um, awesome. Yeah, I just love to grow with Alta. Fantastic. Well, I am thrilled that you're here. <laughs> and you are currently, this is kind of when we, we did episode number one, you stopped by my office and you said, Hey, I listened and I have a story. I have a story that I want to share. And I think I said something like, "Congratulations, you're guest number two for the for the next broadcast." So, put me in the hot seat. Exactly right, right away. away. <laughs> be careful what you be careful what you say to me. So, but but the story that you want to share, we talked a little bit before we started recording. It's not so much a story of something that has happened and a lesson that you've learned. It's a story that is currently still unfolding. So yes. tell us tell us about yeah. what you want to share. Well, what, when I was listening to the first um, podcast that you had, I was visualizing as I'm walking around the room doing some things, I straightening up the room, organizing, and, and just picturing everything that was going on in your conversation, like I was driving in a car listening to the radio. And uh, and it made me just reflect on my own teaching practices and some of the changes over the years that I have been working through. And a lot of it centers around the idea of, of me taking a risk. And no two years have ever been the same, mm. uh, regardless of the grades that I, I've taught. Every year is a new dynamic. And part of that change is how I work with kids and and how they're learning, and particularly the learning environment is an area where I saw myself taking a lot more risk. And I first started teaching typical rows, and I thought, whoa, this is a, a putting kids in collaborative seating is, is a new innovation and a great way to get the kids to mm -hmm. talk and, and collaborate. But over the years, I realized there's so much more to that. And as we were as I was trying new lessons, new activities, it led me to actually look at my classroom environment a lot differently. And I try to keep pretty organized and the kids have their desk and they organize their books on one side and they have color-coded folders and and uh, they dismiss first row second row and 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 everything was so set but I was controlling mm. it and when it really came down to how are the kids functioning on their own their own autonomy I was still controlling who sits where who who gets to do what when and I wasn't getting the fullness of their learning environment. So I, I took a risk and I got rid of a couple desks and I thought, okay, now what am I going to do with the student's belongings? Mm. You know, if I don't have a desk, what that's am a, I going to do? That's a logistical question that you have to, because mm -hmm. you see articles, oh, I got rid of desks. But yeah. that's something, well, but, what am I going to do with their books, their yeah. pencil box, things like that. The realistic part of that, yeah, how that, how is that going to work? And I, I'd go visit other teacher colleagues who taught kindergarten. And ah. I thought, okay, now they're sitting on a rug, they have tables, they have little centers, and they have a great big room, which we all envy. <laughs> and yet there was a sense of freedom for these kids to move from one place to the room to another to another. And I thought, okay, this is more important to me than worrying about where they're going to keep their things. So I decided to put some of the kids' belongings in to some little crates. 
and it still wasn't enough. Over in, Every year I just took back a little more and a little more, and it wasn't with the intention to just get rid of desk. It was how to make the room a great learning environment where kids can come up with their own ideas and carry them out without me telling them what to do every student, part of the day. Student-centered and not, Very you mentioned earlier, teacher-controlled. Yes. And as a former teacher who was very structured and organized like you are, that's hard to give up. It is. It <laughs> is. I mean, control is comforting in many mm -hmm. cases, but mm -hmm. you're finding... And that was probably the greatest risk because mm -hmm. it was relinquishing my control and still trying to figure out how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of models out there or other schools to look at or other teachers and so I started looking online at different classroom environments, and some were just so relaxing and and home. And mm -hmm. and and then I thought, okay, I'm going to try some of these things. I brought in lamps and I brought in plants. Got rid of some desk and started putting uh, their materials in in different um, shelves. And I realized the kids, they on their own, they know what they need, they put it away, yeah. um, they pull out the manipulatives that they need on their own, and they've learned parameters and boundaries, how to operate in an environment. Of course, they were excited at first. Sure. The novelty wears off in a couple <laughs> of days. Um, and then the, this was my, this was probably the most affirming, one of the most affirming things is when the parents call me and say I don't know what's going on but my child loves school mm -hmm. and I know they're not playing all day and actually some of the kids who have a very difficult time staying seated yeah. are actually getting a lot more done because if they're sitting up distracted at eye level with the other kids if they're sitting in a corner on the floor reading a book and taking notes on a clipboard they're ignoring the other kids. That's one distraction that's away because I'm not controlling the sit at your desk environment. Be, because you're, for the listeners, your classroom is a little of everything. You you haven't thrown out all the desks. No, by you no have, means. You have desks, you have stools, you have a big rug area, you have a corner with some couches that I want to have grade level meetings in that corner of your room because it looks like the friend's coffee shop. Mm -hmm. I mean, picture Central Perk coffee shop. You've got the like little wall. It's awesome. I mean, how can you not be comfortable in there? But like you said, you have something, you have standing desks, you have seated desks, mm -hmm. you have kids can do what's comfortable for them. And I got to visit Google, Google headquarters. I think we were talking before about a year ago for a, a Google Summit, and I got to visit and see. So when people say, oh, well, that's not real life, that's not prepared, it is. Google has treadmill stations where people can stand up and walk while they're working on their laptops there. So, I mean, it's you're giving kids what they need. Yeah, well, also I looked at research, and uh, some, some of the re research that's showing is that for the kids to actually activate and focus deeper, there needs to be a part of their body that might be moving. moving. And so when you get the kids who stand up and they need to move, at least have a stand-up table. Yeah. So that they can continue focusing rather than I caught myself battling, you know, be still, be still, be still, yeah. or you're tapping. And so the fluidness of the room um, that that really helped kids make their choices. Yeah. That really helped. Also, they, they learn in their environment what areas in the room are more conducive to what activities and projects that they're actually mm. working on. And I don't have to move desk anymore. I can't, I don't have to worry about, oh, this certain student shouldn't sit next to this student. And because no matter where I moved them, it was going yeah. to be a talking problem anyway. So this now, is like you were talking about in regard to my den, we call yeah. it. Uh, the den, if they, they know that I have to be responsible and accountable and follow the guidelines in that den. And if I don't, then I, I need lose to move. 
I lose the privilege of being yeah. in the den. And I'm seeing a lot more children are taking responsibility for their own learning in that. I need to move. These kids are talking and they're working on this math problem and I'm distracted. And I see them find another cozy mm -hmm. corner rather than telling me, Mrs. Poliska, these two are talking. I can't get to work. Yeah. They took that responsibility on their own. So Could, that's just a... Because that talking... Like you said, they may, that may have been productive talking. Yes. But it's still noise mm -hmm. for somebody else who's trying to get something mm -hmm. done. So, now, well, yeah. again, I wish listeners could could get into your room and see because it, it is it is truly, it's what you read these articles in the twenty first century, twenty uh, first century classrooms and learning spaces and things like that. But you have not got here. You didn't get to point A to Z. In, no. in, in a year. You, no. This has been a, a, like you said, I took a few desks away and then a few more and added this and added that. So, no, it's, it's, I'm thrilled that you took that risk and because it's benefiting. I mean, I, gosh, I love coming into your classroom. I've told you Thank that you. many, many Thank times. You. And so, as we do on the show, typically guest shares a story and then I share a story. And, and the sh I wanted to share, when you said you were going to take a, a story about risks. I wanted to share a short story about a risk that I took once, not nearly the same kind of risk. I didn't transform my classroom like you did, but I want to say it was my, I think it was my fifth or sixth year of teaching. I was teaching fifth grade and I had a group of kids that year who really struggled with transitions. Have you ever had a group of kids oh, like that? Uh, every year? <laughs> yeah, every, every year, year, yeah. And every year you work on this, but this this group really, just in terms of when it was time to transition from one activity to another, they were constantly talking, they were constantly, and it was wasting instructional time. It mm -hmm. took way longer than it should have, and we kept working on it, and, and they just kept choosing to make poor decisions that talk, despite all the warnings, and we got to a point where one day I said, boys and girls, enough. Mm -hmm. We're, you, we only have a limited amount of time and you're wasting it. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you the reminder, it's not hard. Take out your math book. We're not talking to our neighbor. That should be done, that should be done in five seconds, mm -hmm. 10 seconds. And it's taken three minutes <laughs> because I'm having to get you all back in. So the next, if this happens again, we're going to have to practice putting our math book away and mm -hmm. taking it out. We may have to do it 20 times. And we're going to take that time that it takes to do that, and you, you may lose that from your recess. Yeah, and they're fifth graders. And they're, they're fifth older. graders. They're you, older. <laughs> they're older. So I wasn't asking. I always used to say, boys and girls, I'm not asking you to fly. <laughs> if I ask you to fly, Mr. Crowley, I can't fly. Exactly. So I'm not going to ask you to do something you can't do, but this is something you can do. Lori, do you think it worked? <laughs> Did it? Nope. The very next time, they woo, we, we, we were transitioning. So I said, all right, guys, I told you, that's it. This is what we're doing. We're practicing 20 times. <laughs> Taking your book out, putting away. Take it out, put it away. And if anybody talks, we're getting a citation, which was our school's big thing. Because we're talking way months of up to this point. So we started. All right, boys and girls, when I say go, take your math book out. Go. Took it out, put it away. Take it out. Put it away. And we're timing. Boys and girls, you're going to lose. At about number 11 or 12, the door opens to my classroom. <laughs> you want to guess who popped into my room at that exact time? The principal. That's right. The principal <laughs> walked into my room at that exact time. And I will never, I literally, I will never forget when the principal walked to my left, one of my students, one of my really awesome students, she turned to the door, saw the principal, had a look of like, oh no, looked at me, looked back to the principal, back to me, a look as if to s communicate without words, oh no, the principal's here, Mr. Coley, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> and I remember at that moment, looking back at her, the student, and without saying anything, trying to communicate a look of, thank you for your concern. Oh. But I'm not doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. This may not look good mm -hmm. right when she walked in. Like, Mr. Coley, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. In, out, in, taking the books out. Why aren't you teaching type thing? But I looked at her and I, as if to say, like, it's okay. I'm not doing anything wrong. And I said, put it away. 
take it out. And we we you kept continue, doing it. Continue. And the principal was standing there for a few minutes. And after a few more times, I stopped and I said, Dr. Dameron, we're having a hard time transitioning. And we've been working on this for a long time. And we're wasting instructional time. And the kids are continuing to talk when they're not supposed to. And we're having to practice. And the time that we're, that we're wasting now, we're going to have to take from, the, mm -hmm. from their recess. And Dr. Dameron looked at the students, kind of looked across them, and kind of gave a look like, guys, I'm mm -hmm. disappointed in you. She looked at me, gave me a thumbs up, and said, carry on, Mr. Coley. And she walked out. Mm -hmm. And we had about five more to go, so it was like, put it away, take it out, <laughs> put it away, because I needed to prove that point. The guys, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Our time matters. Mm -hmm. And we need to be responsible. We need to be respectful. We need to be organized. We, all mm -hmm. of that. So, mm -hmm. And what I learned, kind of going back to taking a risk, in my fifth year of teaching, I took the risk that, you know what, this won't look good. Yes. <laughs> if the principal walks in on the surface, this is not mm -hmm. going to look real good. Mm -hmm. but, but I wasn't doing anything. But, but it was the right mm -hmm. thing to do. In the same way that, that I could walk in to your classroom, if I didn't know better, if I didn't know it was, walk in and see kids on the floor, all over the place, talking, but knowing and the, Mrs. Poliska, why aren't your kids in rows? Why are they? Why are? Why are they? But you're not doing anything wrong. You took a risk, and knowing what I know, knowing that the learning in your room is at such high levels, it's okay. It's it's not a matter of how is it. How does it look? Mm -hmm. It's what is actually going on. And like I said, explaining it to my principal, once she knew, okay, yep, you're doing, keep, carry on. And I say the same thing to you. Carry on, Mrs. Poliska. <laughs> I well, mean, <laughs> one good thing is that when somebody does walk in the door, they don't all turn around and look mm -hmm. because they're pretty much busy. Because they're engaged. Yeah. They don't even know somebody's coming in, in because they're working. Mm -hmm. That's what, That was one of the things I noticed. Also, I don't have a front of the room. All four of my True. walls are the front of the room. So they're, they're not sitting in so so confined yeah. that again it's back to that fluid that took me a while because i hovered i wanted to go to my mm -hmm. desk i wanted to to stay this is the back of the room this is the front of the room and i realized i can't operate that way if the kids are all over the place yeah but i maximized actually more space in my room oh you're more corners which allowed the kids to spread apart and uh sometimes if they want to work alone and be alone they can. Yeah. They can. And, and, and you'll walk into your room and, because some kids, that's what they need. Yes, some kids, at that time. Some, at that time, mm -hmm. some kids, you know what, to do the best job for this task, mm -hmm. I need to work by myself. Mm -hmm. And in another task, you know what, I want to work with Billy. I want to work with Susie. I want to work with whoever. Yeah. It's whatever they need for that particular task. You are giving them the opportunities to do that. Yeah. and. Carry on, Mrs. Poliska, because you're doing you. you're doing an amazing <laughs> job. So thank you. It's still a work in progress, but it, there's always room for our, change and growth. Our school's so. theme is pursuing mm, excellence, excellent. and so, we're yeah. constantly striving to get better. So, Lori, thank you so much for joining me. Sure. Uh, I'm thank glad you. To be here. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Uh, once again, we are now available in iTunes. If you're listening on uh, my website, brentcoley.com, you can continue to listen there. We're also available in iTunes and very soon Google Play, so you can subscribe to us there. Once again, thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.